it will also cut it so you can make stickers super easy. So here, I'm gonna show you how we can bring this artwork in, tell it to cut that, just a simple line like that, or we can do a more complex line like on this Melco. So let's watch on, on my screen how we do that. Here in Illustrator, I have my Roland logo. And this is just a regular vector image. It's just regular vector paths on the, on the Roland logo. To create a cut line, I need to create this stroked line at 0.25. The trick here is that line needs to be labeled capital C, capital C in cut contour, and it needs to be a spot color. It can be any color, but it needs to be labeled spot color. So if I do that, and as I created a simple shape here, this is just a rectangular shape. So if I wanted to create another cut line, I could just create again that rectangular shape, click on um, uh, my, my stroke and make my stroke 0.25, label it cut contour. If I wanted to cut it all the way through, I could do a perf cut contour. So obviously that's the fill, we don't want that. We would want it perf cut contour. And again, the trick here is it needs to be a spot color, perf cut contour, PCC capital, capitalized. So what that would do is it would cut through the backing of the material in addition to just the vinyl itself. So that's a way to make a simple cut line on the Melco logo here, this is a little bit more complex. You can see that the Melco logo is standalone. And my cut line for this is a little bit more detailed. So I'm going to show you how I did that real quick so you can recreate this and do it yourself. So I'm just going to create a new document so I'm not messing around with the one I already have saved. I'm going to work over here where it's a little bit easier to see instead of the white background. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a copy of this. So I'm going to copy and paste it. I just pasted it over top, see? And now I'm going to create a stroke line that fills basically everything that I want um, about the expanse of where I want my cutting to be. So I created just a regular stroke line. We can send this to the back so you can see a little bit easier. This is essentially what I want my cut line to be. Well, let's just hide that one. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. So from here, I need to then decide uh, what do I want to fill in and what do I want to be, um, uh, what do I want to cut? So do I want to cut all these little pieces out? Or do I just want to, do I want to fill those in? What do I want to do? So I'm, I'm going to opt to fill those pieces in. So the fill I'm not with And I just use my uh, shape tool to fill those pieces in. Now, what I have here is essentially what I want to cut. So the trick here is we want to object, expand, fill and stroke, make sure everything's expanded. And then in your Pathfinder palette, we want to merge all those pieces together. So now they're just one piece. Now, when I, if I were to take my cut contour line, this one here, I'm just going to paste it in here so I have the, uh, the, the, the spot color. I can add a stroke to this. We don't need that. We need, oops, sorry. We need to add a stroke to this labeling it 0.25 and now you'll notice that there is our cut line and I can just unhide my Melco logo bring it to the top and there's a real simple way to create a complex cut line by using the stroke tool in Illustrator so in the Pathfinder tool so now I'm, I've, I've got this basically the way I want it I want it to be five inches oh no no I want it five inches in size. And now the trick, there is a trick here. If you were to save this out of photo of a, out of Illustrator with your, your your document this size, 
um, you would you would show up in Versa Studio with your document this size. So I always make my document about the same size as my design. The trick is to not make it any smaller because it won't actually print and cut the whole thing. Uh, but if you make it too big, then it will kind of throw off your sizing. I think it's a little weird. So I just kind of put it right to the edge of my of uh, my cut line. And so then I can save that as a PDF, so Melco Cut Logo, and I can just save that as a PDF. And that is what I take into uh, Versa Studio to, or VersaWorks to, um, to cut. Okay, and why don't you follow me over here to the um, VersaWorks software. This is the software that comes with the Roland. I did my artwork, prepped it, on my Mac, but I'm using VersaWorks to um, uh, prep uh, to spool the art, get it ready to go for for the printer. So the way I do this is I'm going to open a new job in QA. I'm going to take the artwork that I saved. I'm just going to show use the Epson logo as an example. And then once it comes in, I can work with the settings, right? So I've already imported the two that I want to do, the Melco logo and the Roland logo. And I'm just going to open them and show you what we're looking at here. So the Melco logo, you notice that the, the marching ants or the marquee line is around them. That means that it's going to cut. Notice in special characters here uh, or special items that that A is there. That A means that the cut line has been in. So here is the Roland one. We have the, the A is there, so we know that the cut line is there. You can see it in the settings, the marching ants, right? So we have those set. They're at five inches wide. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually nest these. So I'm going to um, select both of those by selecting shift and then clicking. And then I'm going to right click and then I'm going to hit nest. This way I'm going to be able to print both the Roland logo and the Melco logo at the same time. I have it the tile space at about 0.40 of an inch. They're both five inches wide. I'm going to do 10 of each. It's going to be pretty easy. Under quality, I'm just going to go standard. I selected generic vinyl. That works really well on the, uh, the calendar vinyl. And under layout, that's basically it. We're going to get our media width just to make sure. So we're at 26.77, which is typical um, on the 30-inch cutter, printer cutter. So I'm going to hit OK on that. One thing I want to show you guys is that um, on the SG, we have to remove these media clamps. But on the SG2, you do not. So I'm going to install these media clamps on the SG. We only have to remove them when we're going to cut, uh, when we're going to do the, um, the sheet cut. When you're, when you're printing and cutting, you can leave them in. But if you're going to use the sheet cut function, you have to remove those two clamps. So I just cut this out, so I removed them, but I just put them back in. So now I'm going to hit the, uh, now that I have it nested and it's ready to go, I'm just going to send it down to the print button. And you'll notice up here, here's our nest job. And here's, it gives us our print status. It's starting to spool. You'll see it spools very quickly. And it'll start printing. Cool thing about stickers like this on this machine is it's super durable. It's really easy to do. And there's a lot of high margin in this stuff. The, one of these printer, uh, the stickers probably only cost maybe a cent to print. Uh, that's out of ink. And then your media itself is probably only a couple cents. So each sticker, I would say, is maybe 10 cents to produce. Cost to resell, I'd say at least a dollar or two dollars. So typically in the vinyl print cut world, your margins are like a thousand percent or so. It really can be crazy. So there's a ton of money to be made with this thing and it's super versatile. You've probably seen some of the other videos where we're printing on canvas. Uh, we can print banners. Uh, you can do heat transfers for t-shirts. You can do window clings. You can do like uh, those those big wall, like wallpaper type stuff you can put on the wall and print on it and then remove it. So there's a lot of functionality with these things. Um, Roland is, we have, we have, Roland is kind of keeping up with inventory now. So things are coming in a little bit better during this whole pandemic. Things were a little bit slow. The SG line, you know, they're, 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 they're bringing them in a lot quicker, producing them a lot faster. So the wait times aren't nearly as long as they used to be. So Get your hands on an SG or uh, 300 or 540 or 640. We can turn those pretty quickly. There's the VG line also that includes more ink. This is just a four ink color system, CMYK. The VG line is eight. So super easy, super fast, super simple. Thanks for watching. And uh, make sure you subscribe.
and watch more of our Digital Monday videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.